Bail last year from an Iranian prison has an announced she will not return to Tehran next week to face espionage charges. Sarah Shroud uh, was jailed for 14 months after she and two of her friends were detained by Iranian border forces on July 31, 2009, for allegedly hiking across the Iraqi border into Iran. She was released on humanitarian grounds on $500,000 bail last September. Shroud's friends, Shane Bauer and Josh Fatal, remain imprisoned in Iran. They have now been held for over 91 weeks. Shane Bauer is a 28-year-old freelance journalist who has worked for Democracy Now! You can go to our website and see one of his reports. He has also worked for The Nation, for Mother Jones, and other news outlets. Josh Fatal is 28 years old. He's an environmental educator. Uh, Sarah Shord also revealed Wednesday she's suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. She's joining us here in New York. Sarah, welcome. Um, your fiancé, uh, Shane and Josh, still in prison. The trial's next week. You were supposed to return. Oh, tell us about your PTSD. Well, I, I can't go back, Amy. I, a part of me would like to go and stand by Shane and Josh. This is going to be a very difficult experience for them. But um, my, I've had a diagnosis for post-traumatic stress, and I feel it will be aggravated if I return, and that could result in permanent damage. Tell us about your time in prison, in the Iranian prison, and what you understand Josh and Shane are going through now. Though they have each other, you were alone as a woman imprisoned. I was alone. I saw Shane and Josh very little. And my mental health concerns right now, what I'm suffering, what the families are suffering, only make us more concerned about Shane and Josh. They've been there far longer than I was. I was there for 14 months, and they've now been there for more than 21 months. And we've had no communication with them for over five months. We, we don't know if they're safe. We, they could be sick. When I was in prison, we had we resorted to hunger striking several times because of our conditions and because we had no access to our families and no communication with the outside world. I fear that Shane and Josh could be hunger striking now, and we wouldn't know. And, and uh, what do you know about the trial? Have they had access to lawyers? Will they be able to have lawyers defending them in this, in this trial? We have a courageous lawyer, Masood Shafi, and he's done the best he possibly can within the framework of Iranian law to defend Shane and Josh, but he's made no progress. He's never been allowed to meet with them privately. So they're going on trial. This is the second session, May 11th. And I, I believe this is an opportunity to resolve this. And will this be done? It will, will it be a public trial, or will uh, is it in a civilian or military court? The first trial was was private. It was a closed trial. Uh, there were 45 um, international journalists outside of the courtroom that were not allowed in, and um, we hope that this will be made public. Talk about your time there, and talk about what you went through to give us a sense of what they are going through now. Well. Um, Shane and Josh, I was alone in a cell, and I saw them briefly every day in the open air room, uh, which is just a, uh, high stone walls with bars over the ceiling. Um, they're in a small cramped space, and I've heard that now they only leave their cell 40 minutes a day. The lights are always on. They have to sleep with something wrapped around their eyes. They have, they're completely isolated. It's an extreme form of isolation. What indications are you getting from the Iranian government, from Ahmadinejad, the president, um, and also from our president in the United States about what's happening? Well, there have been so many you know, positive statements made. When I met with Ahmadinejad after I was released in September, I met with him in New York. He said he would recommend to the judiciary that they treat this case with leniency and expediency. 21 months without a trial is not expedient. <laughs> and But I, I'd like to believe that the president has passed on these recommendations to the judiciary and that we will see results um, come this May 11th. Yeah, you've raised, uh, you've uh wanted to refute certain allegations that were made in the initial uh, uh, hearing that were held. Uh, what were the specific ones that you felt were just uh, outrageous? Well, I, it's impossible for me to believe that the Iranian authorities actually think that Shane and Josh are a threat. When we, from the very first minute that the soldiers found us um, hiking somewhere near the Iran-Iraq border that is completely unmarked, behind a tourist um, uh, location, you they knew— you even crossed the border? I have no way of knowing that. There's, there was no indication of a border. And, and it, we were not in a dangerous area. We were in an area where a lot of Kurdish people um, vacation in the summer, and they have homes in that area. 
Um, so, what made you go into Iran ultimately? The Iranian soldiers called you or pulled you over? We were having lunch, and then we saw soldiers, and they motioned for us to come to them. I th from the very first moment, they knew that we had no intention of coming into uh, Iran. I wasn't in Iran. It's mandatory for a woman to wear a headscarf. I wasn't wearing a headscarf. The first thing that the Iranian soldiers did, they forced us into their jeep. They took us with them. They stopped in the first town to buy me the proper clothing because I couldn't even be seen by police and questioned the way that I was dressed without a headscarf and proper clothing. Um, when I was the chief of human rights, uh, Mohammad Javad Laranjani, he said that I was released because the judiciary was convinced that I was incapable of espionage. Shane and Josh are incapable of espionage, too. They're two peace activists. None of us spoke a word of Farsi before we were thrown in prison in Iran. Why were you in that area? We were, um, we were on vacation. You know, I was living in Damascus. I was teaching Iraqi refugees that wanted to um, come to college um, in the West, in, in the U.S., um, and pursue higher education. I was learning Arabic, and northern Iraq is a, a safe place. It's the other Iraq. No American has ever been killed or kidnapped there in recent decades. It's been — it's a no-fly zone. It was made a no-fly zone in 1991 to protect the Kurds from Saddam Hussein. And so people don't understand that we were not in a war zone or a dangerous area. So you fully expect, by not attending the trial, that you'll be tried in absentia by, by the Iranian government, or, or they've given any, any indication that they would have dropped your charges altogether? No, I'll be tried. And um, I hope that this is an opportunity for justice. It's long overdue. How are you dealing with your post-traumatic stress? Um, one day at a time, the same way that Shane and Josh are and everyone in our families and not everyone that loves us. Are you able — are Josh's parents able to — are Shane's parents able to talk to them? No. We haven't been allowed a phone call since Thanksgiving. And even that was extremely brief. Um, the the lack of phone calls is uh, is cruel. I, I don't understand the logic. Do you know whether any of, of their family members or a representative of the United States government, I, I guess, will be uh, attending the trial at all? No. Um, none of us have been invited to the trial. As I said, the first session, the, the Swiss consulate, the ambassador, wasn't even allowed, and she's supposed to um, — the ambassador Loy represents our interests. Um, Masoud Shafi will be there. Uh, he's a very brave man, our lawyer, and he — Shane and Josh are completely isolated. All they have is Masoud Shafi. They have him and they have God. And is there anything Americans can do or people who are watching, listening to this, reading this all over the world, including Iran? Yes. Um, join our campaign. You know, we need numbers. Uh, we need help. We doubling our, our Facebook um, friends. And your website. And our website is freethehikers.org. There are action alerts. The more people keeping our story on the radar, the better. Sarah Shura, thanks so much for being with us. Detained by Iranian border forces along with Shane and Josh, July 2009. That does it for our broadcast.